Dr. Shoji is going to talk to us about the Center for Therapeutic Innovation for Glomerular Disease in Native Kidneys. I encourage you all to stay to the end. I've got several important announcements to make at the end to encourage you not to leave. So we've got Dr. Shoji's uh, relatively short presentation, and she'll be right here. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about several clinical trials that we have going on for glomerular diseases. Um, it's going to be attacking glomerular diseases mechanistically, both in renal transplants as well as in native kidneys. Um, so our trials actually focus on the most common F um, glomerular diseases that we have, FSGS and IgA nephropathy. Um, the first one, the ASKP 1240, which Flavia already mentioned before, so this is for using for FSGS, so it's actually in transplant patients to prevent recurrence of FSGS. Um, the second trial, the PF-512, um, this is to be used in native kidneys in terms of treating for FSGS. And our third trial is to treat for IgA nephropathy in native kidneys using ALNCC5. So for the first one, the ASKP-1240, as mentioned, is an anti-CD40. Um, and we're trying to use this to prevent recurrence of um, FSGS in renal transplants. Um, so this is a fully humanized um, anti-CD40, a monoclonal antibody that blocks the co-stimulatory pathway of CD40, CD154. So by blocking the CD40, CD154 interaction in B cells, T cells, and antigen-presenting cells, it decreases the B cell proliferation, leading to decrease in antibody production, um, as well as decrease in cytokine release from uh, macro macrophages. So this is a study that basically was looking at the effectiveness of using ASKP-1240 um, as a treatment for preventing rejection. So there were three treatment arms. So one of them was trying to use um, the, let's see. So, okay, so the first arm, oh, sorry, let me just go back. So the first arm is basically looking at the standard of care. So that is TAC, MMF, and steroids. Um, the second one is trying to avoid actually CNI used, and so it uses the ASKB1240 in combination with MMF. The third one uses CNI minimization, so they actually target a TAC goal of about 2 to 5 used with the anti-CD40. So there were about 50 patients in each of these arms, and what it showed is that for the combo of ASKP with TAC, they actually had about, you know, uh, non-inferior to the standard of care TAC, MMF, and prednisone in terms of preventing rejection. Um, this was superior to the combination of ASKP with MMF. And since, you know, about 30 to 40 percent of the patients have recurrent FSGS, this has been, you know, a field where we want to target, um, you know, reduction in recurrent FSGS and renal transplants. And so this is a study in trying to figure out if we could find a therapy for that. Um, so basically for ASKP-1240 and use for FSGS, the theory is that, you know, for, we don't actually know the mechanism for FSGS. However, there has been noted that there is a higher levels of anti-CD40 in patients who have recurrent FSGS. And so the theory is that if we use an anti-CD40, that could possibly reduce the um, podocyte injury due to some sort of anti-CD40. And so the study here that we have is that we have, they're randomized to either standard of care, which is MMF, TAC, and steroids, or they re re received ASKP-1240 with TAC and steroids. These are all patients who have biopsy-proven um, primary FSGS. Um, these are infusions that are initially given pretty frequently, but after the first three months, they're given on a monthly infusion for the first year. So this study basically covers the patients for one year. So currently, we have nine patients enrolled in this study. Um, we have five patients who got um, randomized to the treatment arm. And from this, we see that basically for all five patients, we have not had any, um, any um, events of rejection. Um, and for all these patients, they have not had any recurrence of FSGS. So for the second trial that I'm going to discuss, the PF-512, this is to treat for FSGS in native kidneys. And so this is an exciting trial where we're actually mechanistically trying to target podocytes and trying to treat for FSGS. So Robo2, um, this is a SLIT2 ligand that is localized in the basal cell of podocytes. Um, in mice, it has been shown that those who have lost function of the Robo2 actually have improvement in actin um, polymerization as well as decrease in proteinuria. 
So the study basically uses a um, PF512, which is a recombinant robo-2. It has the domain of the robo-2 that is fused to a human FC receptor. And so typically what happens is, is that the slit um, 2 binds to the protocytes at robo-2, which complexes with nephrine. Um, that, is a, that decreases the actin polymerization, leading to protocyte injury. Here, what it's going to do is that basically the recombinant robo-2 is going to bind to the slit 2 so that it doesn't interact with the podocytes, and so that you're able to um, maintain the structure and integrity of the podocytes and leading to decrease in proteinuria. So we will be trying to um, enroll patients who have primary FSGS biopsy proven. Um, they would have had to have failed standard of therapy, um, but not someone who's failed multiple therapies because you know, we want to actually test to see if this medication actually works um, for FSGS, and so we wouldn't want that to be a scare by patients who have highly resistant um, FSGS. So how this works is that the patient will receive um, IV infusions, which is given every two weeks um, for a total of three months. Afterwards, they're followed for another two months, and there's going to be two cohorts because they're also testing out the higher intensity dosing as well as the lower intensity dosing. The last trial that I'm going to be discussing um, involves IG nephropathy. It's for ALNCC5. So what ALNCC5 is, um, it's a synthetic mRNA um, interference, which what basically it does is that it decreases the liver production of C5, leading to decrease in complement activity. So as we all know, IgA nephropathy is due to aberrant glycosylation of IgA, leading to IgA immune complex deposition, leading to increase in mesangial proliferation. And so with this deposition, it increases pro-inflammatory markers, leading to podocyte injury, as well as tubular interstitial fibrosis. So how this drug works, which is also called Semsidurian, is that it basically silences the C5, so there is a decrease in MAC production, as well as C5A, and regardless of what kind of path, um, complement pathway is activated, and this basically leads to decrease in mesangial um, proliferation. So with this study, we'll be enrolling patients who have biopsy-proven IG nephropathy, who have been treated with you know, optimized doses of ACE inhibitors or ARBs, ARBs for at least three months, and still have persistent proteinuria of above one gram. So the patients will be randomized either to the study drug or will be receiving placebo. Um, this is a sub-Q in uh, injection that they'll be receiving on a monthly basis for a total of eight months. So if you have, you know, come across any patients who would be, you know, who would benefit from any of these studies, feel free, um, feel free to contact us anytime, either by phone or by email. Thank you.